Hey Construction Legends, so today I'm going to talk about the one thing that all subcontractors do who are extremely profitable. Now, if you had told me this maybe five years ago, I probably would have laughed in your face. So let's get into it. What is that one thing? So the first question I would like you to ask yourself is what are you optimizing for? Now, I was a big football fan back when I was younger, so I'm from Ireland, and so when I talk football I'm talking soccer for the Americans football I guess for the Australians and, and Kiwis and the rest of the world as well but let's just assume we're talking about soccer and there was this race for the title years ago I can't remember it was in the 90s or something I can't remember the exact year but it was Manchester United versus Newcastle United and the philosophy of Newcastle United was this flamboyant really exciting football they had all of these beautiful like way they, they played football football was just incredible it was so exciting and the manager's philosophy was we're going to score more goals than the other team very very simple we're going to win by, by scoring more goals and the others was a very shrewd Scottish guy he was the manager of Manchester United called Alex Ferguson and of course I'm a Manchester United fan from very young but his was his philosophy was a bit different it was not to lose and so as they went forward and over the, the period of the whole season it got it was close and this Newcastle everybody loved Newcastle it was exciting but at the end of the day when it came down to the very end of the season Manchester United won the season and it's interesting because even though the sexy beautiful football was sexy and beautiful they didn't win at the end of the day and the question I asked you at the start was what are you optimizing for but let's talk about what were they optimizing for so Kevin Keith Keegan, who was a manager of Newcastle United, he wasn't actually optimizing to win. He was optimizing to play beautiful football, to give the crowds, you know, an electrifying entertainment. He wasn't optimizing to win the long game, while Sir Alex Ferguson was optimizing to win the long game. And the way he did that was by not losing. So from a subcontracting point of view, what are you optimizing for? And so surely as a subcontracting business, you're optimizing to make as much money as you possibly can, I hope. Or, you know, maybe you're doing something else, but ultimately if you haven't made that decision to try and make as much money as possible, then maybe that lies where your problem is. But if you're optimizing to make as much money as profitable, if we look at the most successful construction companies, what are they doing? What if we analyze the most successful subcontracting business, just even think of the ones that are in your area Area. There's a couple of things that they have in common. Most of the time, they tend to be privately family-run businesses. Most of the times, they tend to do one thing only, right? And they simplify it, and they're very good at doing that one thing. But they're probably the most important thing is they have been in business for a very long time. Okay, that is the key staying in business for an extremely long period of time. So how do you stay in business for a long period of time if you are a construction subcontractor? That is the question you should be asking yourself if you're optimizing to make the most amount of money. And actually, the answer is to not to lose. So in the business of construction so many people are you know want to do the Kevin Keegan Newcastle version of everything they want to do the sexy bells and whistles stuff they want to like have great you know fanfare and people talking about them have this huge eruption but the problem is that doesn't make you the most amount of money the most amount of money goes to the guys that don't lose the guys that take lower risk opportunities say no they say no more often than they say yes so when i'm talking to the the, the businesses that work for us the, the guys have been in business a long long period of time they're all about no they're all about limiting the downside to anything that's going to happen because if you intend to stay in business in construction for 20 years let's say okay and if you're at 15 20 years that's when the big money comes so let's just assume that you're trying to stay in business for that period of time well what you've got to do it's all about limiting the downside because something bad will happen in that 15 or 20 years 100 you can't avoid it it is construction there's going to be ups there's going to be downs there's going to be booms there's going to be busts you're going to have disputes 
disputes, you're probably going to go to court. So how do you limit the downside? And really, it is reducing your risk in your contract negotiation to make sure that you spend adequate time going, hey, no, that is above our risk threshold. We as a company don't take on that risk. Until you know what your risk tolerance is, you're never really going to be able to make that decision. So what I suggest you do is you create and you go to a lawyer or you go to a contract specialist and you create a set of commercial principles for your business. Say, we don't agree to anything that is outside of this because we know if that one thing does go wrong, that could be the end of our business or it'll set us back too far that we won't be able to recover to last the 15 or 20 years. Years. So I'm going to read you a quote that I really like. It's by a guy called Alex Hermosi, and he says, the best games in life can't be won, only played. You don't win at marriage. The point of marriage is to keep the marriage going. You don't win at health. The point is to stay healthy. You don't win a business. The point is to stay in business and keep the game going. So it isn't about winning. It's about not losing. And so if you can change your perspective to your business to it's not about winning these big projects. It's about not losing and being kicked out of the game because the construction industry is the highest insolvency rate out of any industry with 26% of all insolvencies coming from the construction industry. So with that in mind, you need to be on top of your contracts game, negotiate a lower risk contracts, be on top of your post award contracts game. And from a technical, if we can do the work or not, is it going to be too, too risky? You need to be able to know where your risk is to say no, because by saying no, you're going to stay in business longer. And if you stay in business longer, you're going to make a lot more money. I'll chat to you next one.